Welcome to another episode of the DIY Maker. Today we're going to take a look at turning some waste sardine tins and waste pellet tins and creating a wonderful perlite alcohol stove. Now I know some of you are saying, Bill, perlite, what the heck is that? Uh, perlite is typically sold as a soil additive and it is actually made from volcanic glass. So they take this volcanic glass, they expose it to a thousand degrees, and it literally pops like popcorn when they process it. And what that creates is a, you know, nearly flame proof, or actually in, as far as this stove goes, it is flame proof. It's not going to burn. Um, but this is glass and it is like, a, almost like a puff, like a sponge. And it will absorb the alcohol in your stove and create a great transition to go from liquid to vapor when it's burning. And we'll roll some examples right now of these guys on fire and they look fantastic. So two basic steps here. Number one is to take some screen or expanded metal material like these pieces right here and uh, do some tracing. We're going to do some arts and crafts stuff here to create a cover that's made out of a permeable material like this uh, screen. And uh, we're going to get them to fit nicely inside these stoves. And then we're going to fill them with perlite and then put the screens in place to keep the perlite contained. And then we're going to burn the heck out of these and show you what's up. These are a great improvised little stove. You'll notice I've got some plastic covers on mine. Uh, I'm, I'm offering these files to you for free. These files will be uh, in the link in the description and the pinned comment. And they are available on the uh, printables.com website that Prusa, Prusa 3D Printer sponsors. So you can download these models for free. You can print them. You can get a friend to print them for you. I print mine out of PETG because I like the uh, better temperature range, but I do want to remind you that these are not meant to be used on a hot stove. They're not meant to snuff flames. They're not meant to put on a stove before it's cooled down. These only go on a stove after it's completely cooled off to room temperature and, uh, and it's safe to do so. These are just plastic, so use them appropriately. Now let's see how to make these. It is really a snap. A quick note on fuels for these stoves, guys. You can use denatured alcohol in these. You can run isopropyl. You can run straight methanol. You can run straight ethanol. Uh, pretty much most of your denatured alcohols are a combination of ethanol and methanol and some other compounds to make it uh, really distasteful because this stuff will kill you. Um, but you want, to, you want to use a good high-quality fuel so that you're not putting a bunch of water in your stove. Water won't hurt it, but you're not going to get as much uh, effective fuel in the stove as you would if it's close to 200 proof. 200 proof is actually 100% uh, pure alcohol. So again, ethanol, methanol, isopropyl, all fine. Um, denatured alcohol, which is a combination of some of those, uh, is also fine. That's what I use, and that's what's going to be in all these tests. This is step one of making a perlite alcohol stove out of waste sardine tins or old pellet tins. Um, the first one I made with the pellet tin, I, I had one with a screw on lid. And I have to say, I do prefer those because it really makes it a nice secure thing to keep that stove all together when you're done. But for the purpose of showing you how to make one, I'm going to use a non-screw on pellet tin. Um, for the round one, we're going to use this piece of material right here. Um, this is just waste that I recovered um, from a poorly designed electric motorcycle. This is actually expanded metal. Expanded metal is different than screen like this. This screen is actually woven out of wire, whereas this was actually punched and then pulled apart to create these openings. So it is, uh, it is a single plane of material. It's really nice. 
but I don't have very much of it. So I'm going to save it and use it for the round one. And to make this very simply, what we're going to do is hold it on the material. We're going to take our marker. And just give us a good, clear line all the way around the base. Once we have that, we're going to take and trim right around the line. We're not going to go to the outer edge. We're going to go right to the inner edge of that black line. A little trim there. Very good. That's going to be for the pellet tin version. Again, you want it just a little bit bigger than the container so that when you push it down, those edges flare up and catch on the lip on the top of there. For the rectangular ones, they're slightly more challenging, but not terrible. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to hold this right up on the line of that material. We're going to take our marker. We're going to get these radiuses. We're going to go all the way up to the edge of this, but we're not going to mark the corners yet. And the reason is because we're going to take this and we're going to offset it about a half an inch, somewhere between three quarters and a half an inch. We're going to slide it up and then mark it. And the reason for that is we're actually going to cut this in half and we want them to overlap like these are. This allows us to push the material in, push it under the edge of this metal lip, and then get the two halves to separate and become trapped. And it really does make a very nice secure stove. So let's go ahead and cut this guy out. And then we're just going to cut this right down the middle. You don't have to be super precise here. Just get it on the middle there. And now this will be for this side tin, this size tin. Once you get the perlite in the container, you can take this and get it to fit in there. I think I'm going to take a little bit more off this edge. That's a little bit snug. A little bit too snug. That's about what I want. So we'll get some perlite in these and we'll get these fitted up. I'll go ahead and trim this one out the same way so you can see these all go together. But any one of these shapes is really, really handy. This round shape is perfect for this S-bit stove. It fits right in there. There's your pot for this canteen cooker. This rectangular shape works great. Check that out. You've got great heat coverage there. You're going to get a lot of heat into your canteen cup on this canteen cup stove. This little S-bit stove that is the folding type, it's usually meant for their, uh, their S-bit tabs. You can put that right in there. You've got a great solution. Here's an actual sterno stove, and uh, we open the door. Guess what? We just pop that guy in there, and we've got a great little holder for this that gives us, you know, a really good reusable heat source over an inexpensive, easy-to-obtain foldable stove. 
here's another one by one of the camping supply companies. Uh, this one, again, super handy, meant for a sterno can, but there's no reason why you can't chuck this in there and use it instead. Super handy. These little perlite stoves are really a hoot, and making them out of sardine tins, uh, do clean them out first. Don't, don't use these dirty, because that's disgusting. Use. But remember, this is plastic. You can't use this to snuff the flame, and you don't want to put it on while the stove is still hot. So all this cover is just to keep debris and dust out of the, out of the stove. That's all they're meant for. But I do have them for both regular sizes of sardine tins, and they're all ready to go. And they have a nice little lip on the bottom here that keeps them from going on too far, if you put them on the right way. Yeah, so next up we're going to add some perlite and put these together and uh, show you some fire tests. So step two, we're going to take, put some perlite in our tins. Okay. Once we've got the perlite, just about, I don't know, somewhere between two thirds and three quarters full, it's gonna compress a little bit. These guys, you'll wanna get put in under the lip like that. and then push them all the way down to one end. Make sure you get both corners all the way in. And the other one goes in right on top of that one. There you have it, you can go right down against the perlite. That's pretty much what you want, is for the screen to be right in contact with the perlite. I'm gonna do the same for this one. There's two done, and now we'll do the round one. Round one, just get it lined up so you're pretty much centered and then just start shoving it down in. And there you have it. Three new perlite stoves. Well, let's light them on fire and play with them a little bit. Now, when you're adding fuel to these, um, you're usually around two tablespoons, three tablespoons max for the bigger two. This one I do about two, two tablespoons or less. In this guy, you're gonna get a little bit less burn time. But you can see that that's not, it's not sloshing around that, uh, Perlite does a great job of absorbing most of the alcohol. And if you have liquid, um, you can pour it off. It's okay. But, I mean, these are really great at keeping that alcohol controlled in your stove. 